Tiger time at the MCG. Welcome to the round 14 review after the Richmond Football Club get the job done in the cold, wet Melbourne uh, scene last night. It was 11 goals, 15, 81 to Carlton, 9 goals, 12, 66. Hmm. I'm tired, grumpy, haven't slept much, I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm salty and I'm not happy. That was uh, disappointing. That was not not our best effort last night. Um, I thought you know, the preparation seemed to be fine. You know the rhetoric around you know losing you know our best defenders and not having them available was um, you know put in a situation which not many clubs have been in and will be in in the future. Given that Sam Durden debuted, which was a great story for him and um, you know we're just in a situation where we're just making do with what we've got and looking to what we do have but you know to be honest going into the game last night I wasn't focusing on what we didn't have because I still felt like we had plenty to win the game you know the midfield for the most part is there minus Chera um, you know we've got Cripps, Walsh and Hewitt who have been three of the better midfielders in the competition uh, over the course of this season, you know, Charlie and Harry up forward, uh, Jack Martin back in the side. And yeah, I, I mean, going in, my thought process was just win the midfield battle, similar to what we did in round one, and put the pressure on up the ground and just don't allow bulk inside 50 injuries into our defense. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we didn't do. We did not adjust according to the weather. It was wet all day in Melbourne yesterday. Sort of the sun came out before the game a little bit, but, you know, it was wet. It was wet. It started raining, you know, right before the bounce. And, yeah, I guess it was disappointing given the build-up. You know, Patrick Cripps plays his 150th, and, you know, he's a, he's a champion of the club. He really is. He's, he's been um, an unbelievable servant for the football club, and I guess definitely want to give him some c- congratulations, Um for what has been, you know, a really good career given the team and the club that he has played for and he's been in a lot of losing efforts. But yeah, what the, the disappointing part about last night was really the first, what do we call it, the first 40 minutes of the game. That first quarter was so disappointing in the way that we just did not react to the situation at hand. We were belted in the middle. Richmond were fully prepared did their homework, had their best team available, minus Dustin Martin, obviously, um, and they just jumped us. We didn't put any scoreboard pressure on. The rain came, with, you know, handballing, which is fine, but it was the handballing combined with the short kicking. It was like we were trying to play our normal game style, which we've all come to see, um, but it just immediately became a territory battle game, and we just did not adjust to it, and I thought it was just disappointing that we didn't have the the game sense and the, the, the on-field leadership to do it. You know, look, it's tough. It's a tough league. It's a tough sport. You know, getting up to play week after week um, in this competition, it's cutthroat. You know, you win, you're equal first, you lose, you're in the bottom half of the eight. It's just in that point. And we have not been in these games for many, many years before. These games that actually matter and that are relevant to how the finality of the season will, will come to us. So... Yeah, the, the start is ultimately what I think lost us the game. You know, we did a pretty good job of of bouncing back. Finally, just needed to get that goal. Um, we finally got our first goal through George Hewitt, found a little bit of a pulse, um, and then started to work our way into the game, which was obviously pleasing. And you know, when you when you concede the first six goals of the game, you know, you don't you more times than not you're probably going to lose. I don't know what the stat is in the history books, but. I'd love to know what the stat is for teams that go on to win after conceding the first six goals of the game, you know? So um, I thought Richmond probably could have put us away by even more earlier in the in the contest. And, um, you know, they were tough. They were tenacious. They were Richmond. And, you know, you've got to give them full credit. They're no mugs. They're right there in the thick of it. You know, they've played in some of the biggest... Well, they have. They've played in the biggest games that you can play in this league. They've played... Um, you know, multiple finals, big finals, prelims, grannies. They've won premierships, this group. So you know you've got to be at your best. And I really sensed, obviously, in the fourth quarter of last week, we were flat. And I put that down to the fact that, you know, Essendon put 
however many behind the ball and we're a little bit um, fo- we're focusing a little bit on just preserving the game and not losing the game and just getting through to the next week and just banking the win. And, you know, there, there is an old saying that goes, you start games how you finish the week before and it kind of looked like that. You know, there was a flatness and just a lack of that spark. And I think because we've seen what this group can do this year when they have the spark and they have that energy when it's not there it's so glaringly obvious and yeah the midfield just seemed to let us down i thought last night overall um the the hunt tackle pressure just wasn't at that same level as what it has been you know at the better parts of this season and a team like richmond are going to make you pay they they play wet weather football so well you know they play the territory game um, so well. And, you know, they got under our skin. Um, they obviously did their homework about what we did well in round one and, and, and rectified it. And, and we just came late to the party. And it's funny because with our group, we, we have this amazing ability to do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. You know, in, in a 10 to 15 minute patch of any game, we can just go bang and you know put four to five goals on the score on the scoreboard and and you know that's a testament to what we're capable of um but ultimately when you have the inconsistent patches you've got to pay the price and that's what happened Uh, i thought we paid the price based on the energy we brought into the game and the footy gods have this fascinating way of repaying you and if you look back early in the season when we had those big leads the 50 point lead the 40 point lead um, you kind of get rewarded later in the game, even though you run out of steam because you put the work in early and the game has a way of rewarding that. And life has a funny way of rewarding that as well. Um, you know, I really don't want to talk about the umpiring because we put ourselves in that position where we're talking about one call or, or two calls here or there, give or take. Umpiring is always going to be inconsistent because the reality is humans are inconsistent. Humans are flawed. And umpiring is a subjective thing. Every umpire sees it differently and, you know, angles are different. And, you know, had we just come prepared and and had the energy from the outset, I don't think we'd be talking about uh, an umpiring decision here or there. Now, was that moment gut-wrenching? Absolutely it was. You know, Nunes kicks the goal. We'd been down all game. We're within a kick. I couldn't believe it. I was super confident that we were going to win the game from that moment. And it was kind of like, it was kind of like I was dreaming and then Richmond kicked the goal straight from the kick in. And then you wake up and you're like, oh shit, no, we're still in this nightmare. It was, it was, it was fascinating um, how the emotions were played on. And it was almost symbolic of the shy Bolton, you know, showing the ball and, and kicking the goal in, in that we almost were showed the victory in the game, and then it was ripped away from us. Um, And I think we'll learn a lot from that. Uh, I think we are not alone in the competition in being one of the many teams at this point in time who is going through a lull or a bit of a down patch. Like even though we've we've won the game last week, um, we've now lost two of three. So there is a little bit of of, of difficulty and you know, the the progression of the season is always going to be linear we're not a team that's just going to be winning every single week and continuing to rise. My hope is that one loss doesn't become two, doesn't become three, and we've got to fight our way through it. That's that's just what it is. You know, it's tough, it's difficult, and things happen. External things happen, injuries happen, life happens, as I like to say. So we've just got to stick fat, stay the course, get the midfield back to where where they're, they're, they're able to be, Um, And I'm sure they will. Um, I'm sure they will. But yeah, I I really did feel like the dysfunction started at the source. Um, I thought we were being slaughtered through the middle. And I know, I understand the rhetoric around, you know, Tom DeConing is is, is younger. He's going through these these bumps along the way. I thought probably the first quarter, let's just say the first half, I thought he was he was beaten, but I did think he he responded really well in that second half and just found a way to, to, to impact the contest. And, um, yeah, the, the, the thing is you can't, you can't control the injuries that we have, especially to the, the key players like, like Pitto, for example, and, and Weider, and you can't control that. But I think what we could control last night, which we didn't, was our application to the intensity in which we brought to the contest. I thought it was there in patches. 
I thought it was there when a few little moments happened and it sparked some life into us, such as, you know, the fight and, and little things like that. Um, but, you know, you look at the midfield numbers, the tackle numbers, they weren't at the level that we've seen them do this year. You know, Cripps led the way in that midfield with five tackles. I think Walsh had two or three. Hewitt had three. Um, Kennedy didn't lay a tackle. You know, these are just guys that really have brought the heat in the midfield for us and, and therefore allowed our defenders to have a little bit more breathing room. Um, you know, when you're giving up 70 plus inside 50s in any game, whether it's dry or wet, you're, you're really not giving yourself the best opportunity to win. So, yeah, I mean, I was really able pretty quickly at a high level to look back and say to myself, well, let's just think about it at the start of the year when we're looking at the season, we know we're playing Richmond twice. I remember sort of looking at it and saying, I think we're going to split this this one. We're going to win one and they're going to win one. And it just made sense. Now, does that mean, you know, because that's the case that we go into last night thinking we're going to lose? No, of course not. But yeah, it's not, I don't think it's a disaster. I think these testing times right now are really um, going to be the important moments for the group moving forward. And you find out a lot more, I believe, when things are just not going your way and who's able to just keep going and finding a gear. And I thought some of the guys who probably get criticized quickly were the ones that probably really carried us a bit last night. Talking about a guy like like a Jack Noons, like a Matt Cottrell, even a, you know, a Jordan Boy to an extent. I know he's relatively new. Um, I thought some of these guys really put in a good shift last night and, and just continued pushing and finding a way. And, and then eventually the rest of our better players found a gear. And um, yeah, I'm obviously disappointed. You want to win every game. You want to win the big rivalry games and you want to have the bragging rights. But you know these are lessons along the way that we're going to have to learn and we're going to have to go through, which will eventually become the building blocks of the great team that I really do believe we're going to become. You know, I do believe and have faith in the guys that are there, the way they commit themselves, the environment in which they are operating, I do believe in it. And yeah, I, I trust that there will be a response next week against Frio at Marvel. And, you know, we've just got to ride it out. You know, we can't sit here and talk about what we don't have because we don't have it. You can't change it. Like Wittering's not there, but there's plenty that are that are there. And there's plenty that are there to still win games of football, even against some of these quality opposition, uh, you know, that we're about to come up against. So yeah, it was, it was what it was. And Malasot, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, a lot of commentary around, you know, the Shy Bolton moment and around the touch decision. Just on the Shy Bolton, I've got, I don't really have any issue with it. If that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. You know, win the game of football and, and give it back to him. You know, beat him on the scoreboard. You know, we'll remember that. I'll remember that moment. No doubt about it. Um, I think when, when Noonsie kicked that goal that was obviously reversed, I was sitting with a couple of my good mates and I'm giving them the, the ball. Um, you know, so it's all, I just, I just found that to be all part of the banter. I didn't take it personally. It's obviously he's a bit of a smart ass, but fair play to him. Good luck to him. He, he got his team going and, um, kicked a nice goal and, and shoved it in our face, you know, just like I shoved it in their face in round one. That's the beauty of, of, of sport. That's the beauty of life goes your way sometimes doesn't go your way at other times and and that's that. But just on the Noons goal that was reversed, I, I think we're living through a time in this league where we're going to look back and, and be really, I think we're going to laugh at it because the resources to get the goal line technology are there. They exist. They exist in the world. It's not like they don't and you know we're just struggling. But the, the fact that we have these pixelated images um, that continue to be shown to us on the broadcast, um, just tell me that there has not been the correct investment in the technology. You know, I mentioned it on the fan cams last night, how we can see to the millimeter where a tennis ball lands on a court and really umpire a game based on that with camera technology and not be able to have that same technology applied to the AFL it bemuses me. The camera angles, where they're positioned, um, they really just need to send someone to Israel, go spend some time with the IDF, go look at their tracking systems and, and, and take the technology and fucking invest in it because it's, last night was last night, but it's been happening for many weeks to other clubs as well. And, you know, the, the biggest fear is that it's going to, 
you know, impact a final and impact um, a result of a really significant moment in, in the course of a season. Now, is that moment going to impact our season? Time will tell. I don't think it will because I still think at this point in time, there are so many games to play where destiny is in our hands and I just want us to take ownership. I want us to respond, get back on track. The midfield have got to find whatever it is that's missing. And I, 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 I'm I, so empathetic to the fact that it's going to have its ups and downs. And the, the tricky part and the reality is, and this applies with everything, you know when you have your down patches, you just got to find a way to mitigate. You know, Paul Sebastiani talks about it a lot. You got to find a way to mitigate the damage. So what I would suggest with that is just don't let one loss become two, become three, become four in a row. You just got to keep plugging away. Um, the season is well and truly in our in our hands, in our destiny. We don't want to get to a point where we're relying on other teams. So, you know, yeah. What unto the Tigers got the job done. They're fierce, you know, some questionable acts there. I thought um, really dangerous play by Prestia when he pushed Cripps almost into Sam Walsh's knee. That could have been just disaster. My, my life literally flashed before my eyes when he did that. Um, it was good to see the fight back. Harry Mackay's fourth quarter was pretty scary. He literally put us on his shoulders for a period of, what was it, six or seven minutes and just turned the game on its head. So you know we've got the pieces there. We, we know we've got the individuals that can really turn games, um, but we've got to get back to playing our best with our system and hunting the opposition. And, and that's just not what we did last night. So we regroup. We have to. We've got no choice. We've got to get back onto it. We've got a nice, solid break now. I don't know if we're going to get any players back. I know that we're going to lose. looks like we're going to lose Sam Durden, who played his first game, got injured. So what we do with this back line is beyond me. And I'm hoping that it's the end of whatever is going on, um, this mystical, unknown fortune that we are having this year with our back line um, and just our, our group and with injuries. Like I understand injuries happen to every club and there will come a time where we get a good run with it. I know it will. It'll, it'll happen, whether it's this year or next year or in years to come. I know it'll come because that's life. It evens out. It finds a, finds a really funny way to even itself out. So we've just got to stick fat, hold firm. And I'm, I'm hoping that um, you know there aren't too many cracks appearing to the point where we can't rectify them and, and continue to bank wins and just hold down the fort until the rest of the cavalry arrive. I think that's, that's what I'm sensing. But, you know, disappointing. What about you? What do you think? Um, how do you feel having slept on that and, and moving forward? Um, what are your concerns or what are you, some things that maybe you, you saw that you were excited about? I think there were still some things we take away from that game that are positive. Um, but ultimately, the way we approached that, that contest from the first bounce was just not the Carlton that we've seen for the majority of this year. So let me know in the comments below. Let us know in the comments below and we'll go from there. Go the Mighty Blues. Yeah!